Jimi Hendrix. So this is a study in a tune that's one of my personal favourites. Um, my, my favourite version of this tune is the Phil East uh, gig he did with Band of Gypsies. And Who Knows is probably, to me, my favourite riff of everything he's done. It's a great study, and the reason it's a great study is that you can use it to improvise and weave through the rhythm lots of lead and position one, and you can even go modal on it if you need to. Um, <clears throat> Jimmy's tuning uh, is iffy at best at this gig. It's E flat, and then it's kind of flat a bit more because I think he probably had new strings and they went out, you know, all that kind of thing. So basically, um, it's somewhere near D. <laughs> Uh, so let's just say it's D and we'll be done with it. So there are two parts to this riff. There's the, the initial part which is low down in the bass region and then there's a second part which is higher up. And what I recommend you do is you start off in the low part, bring it up high and then start mixing in lead with the rhythm when you get to the high part. <laughs> So as you can see, the, the Who Knows riff has a great bouncy, sort of groovy feel to it. Um, let's start. Basically, starts off on the 5th fret A string with the 1st finger on the 3rd fret. And what you're going to do is you're going to play 2 off the 5th fret, pull off and pick the 3rd fret, and then back to the 5th for a pull off to the 3rd. So you get... You're then going to come up to the E string, three in a row, going five, four, three. Pull off to the E, hammer on the first fret, and then third fret D. So you get this. Here's a close up of that for you. So Jimmy circles that a couple of times at the beginning of the gig and then he does the same thing with a slight modification up an octave. So all we're doing is we're starting in position one in D. Uh, we're going to kick off with what I call a double stop when you get two strings snagged under the same finger and you give them some good old wobbly vibrato. So this is the 10th fret B and G string. Slight downward pull, bit of wobbly at the end. And then the same rhythm applied to the D string. So you get D12, D12, uh, D10, 12. 10 and then back. So you get uh, down to the 3 in a row, so 12, 11, 10. On the A string. Up to the E string 10. So we're going to the root this time. Uh, and then down to the minor third, which is the 13th fret E. And then all the way back up to your B string uh, 10. Well, that's quite a big jump. Uh, you're string skipping a vast amount of area there and people find that difficult to first so my advice to you is this section here practice it in isolation now I know Jimmy uses his thumb for that so his root note is played with his thumb the minor third 13th fret E is played with his third finger and then his first finger is in place so I'll show you how he does it if you've got massive hands like Jim then he can do it so his, his thumbs right here hanging over on the root his third thing has come down for this minor third, and there's his, uh, his sting. So now, I, I have medium hands, I can't do that. So, what I do, what I a lot of other people do, is this. Which does give you a big jump because your hand's in a sort of more of a classical position, but it still suffices. So, in a nutshell, you've got 10th fret B and G, 
12th fret D, down to the 10th fret, 10, 12, 10, 3 in a row, 12, 11, 10, E string, 10th fret, 13th fret, jump down for the sting. So, it's a wicked little riff. Um, <clears throat> the secret to learning from this riff, A, jam along with Jimmy when he plays it at the Fillmore East gig, it's just a great gig to play along to, um, and then what you want to start doing is <clears throat> every lick that you've built up in your repertoire, in your armory, try and apply it into this rhythm at real time. So for example, you might have a lick that goes like that. Where can you fit it? What do you have to remove from the riff to stick it in? This is what you're going to exercise. So you might be... So it involves many things. You have to know where you are when you start, where you're going to be within the riff when you finish. You have to have a natural feel of the rhythm involved and um, many other things. It's just a great, great thing to practice. I can't stress enough position jamming. And this really is a Jimmy position jammer in position one. Um, when I first started gigging, and I only had 15 minutes worth of tunes, my band, my first band, Hooker, we used to cover this tune and we used to play it for about 15 minutes, <laughs> so it made up our half an hour slot. And uh, no one seemed to mind, they don't care, because it's just a classic riff and you can go off on one and just play crazy stuff, you know. So set a metronome to something like 70 BPM if you haven't got the recording, if you haven't really just go and buy it because it's genius. Jam on the riff, see if you can stick some lead in the middle. There you go.